experimental error. If we're working with pressures, uh, as we saw in the last chapter and in chapter eight, we can use pressure as a stand-in for moles or concentration when we're dealing with gases. The relationship between the pressure and concentration of a gas can be seen from the ideal gas equation. If we start off with PV equals nRT, we're going to rearrange it to solve for P, where P is going to be N over V times RNT. Right? This RNT is a constant, and N over V, that's a unit of concentration. Right? So our pressure is going to be proportional to our concentration. Both K and KC are used to represent equilibrium constant in terms of concentrations. KP represents the equilibrium in terms of constant partial pressures. So there's a little bit of a transition that we've got to do to go between these KCs, or concentrations in moles per liter, and using pressures. Uh, and as you can imagine, it's going to tie into that ideal gas law a little bit. Right. So... Our equilibrium expression in terms of the concentrations is going to be written this way, right? We're going to do products over reactants, our products over our reactants. And so we're going to look at the concentration of the NH3 squared divided by the concentration of the nitrogen squared and the, of the N2 and the concentration of the hydrogen squared. And that's going to give us our Kc value. Our equilibrium expression can be written in terms of the partial pressures, we're just going to do the pressure of the NH3 squared divided by the pressure of the N2 and the pressure of the H2 cubed. A reaction for the formation of nitrosyl chloride was studied at 25 degrees C. Our balanced chemical equation is that we've got two NOs and two chlorine gases giving us two NOCLs. The pressures at equilibrium were found to be 1.2 atmospheres, 5 times 10 to the minus 2 atmospheres, and 3.0 times 10 to the minus 1 atmospheres. We're going to calculate the value of Kp at this reaction of 25. We'll set it up where our Kp is just going to be the pressure of the products divided by the pressure of the reactants raised to the appropriate exponents that are the same as the values of the coefficients. So what we did is we plugged in our number from before, 1.2, and then we've got 5 times 10 to the minus 2 and 3 times 10 to the minus 1. And you end up with a value of 1.9 times 10 to the third. The fact that this has a very large k value indicates that we favor the product strongly. Okay. There is a relationship between our kc and our kp. And it's going to follow from the fact that for an ideal gas, our concentration is going to be pressure divided by RT. So this RT term is what we've got to worry about. So for a general reaction, where we've got JA times KB gives us LC and MD, the relationship between KC and KP is that we're, our KP is going to be our regular KC times RT to the delta N. And the RT part is pretty obvious. It's the delta N part that sometimes tricks people. Delta N is going to be the change in moles. The difference between the number of moles of reactants from the number of moles of products. R is going to be our ideal gas constant law and our ideal gas constant in uh, liters atmosphere mole Kelvin. The temperature has to be in Kelvin. Right, so let's do an example of one of those. If we've got a value of K at 25 degrees C for the reaction, right, the, we've got N, two NOs and two chlorines giving us two NOCLs. The Kp for that reaction is 1.9 times 10 to the minus third. Right, from the value of Kp, we can calculate a regular old Kc using our relationship between Kp and Kc. So Kp is Kc times RT to the delta N. T is easy. We're going to convert that into Kelvin pretty quickly. We were given this value of Kp. We know R. We know T. Right? We need to figure out what delta N is. And so the sum of the product coefficients is 2. And the sum of the reactant coefficients is 3. So our delta T or delta N is minus 1. So we can rewrite this plugging in all of the numbers we now know. So Kp is equal to Kc times Rt to the minus 1. That's our delta N. We're going to rearrange that and say K over Rt. So our Kc is going to be Kp times Rt. 
We've got a KP. We've got an R. We've got a T. And we end up with 4.6 times 10 to the minus 4 molar.